As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. Welcome to Home Group. We're going to have a good time tonight. We're continuing to talk about the Christmas story. And I'm going to warn you right up front, tonight we're going to talk about a lot of history because we're going to talk about who was, are you ready? Herod the Great. Herod. Who was Herod the Great? Herod the Great. What did he do? Was he really great? Why was he great? When did he become called great? What do we know about Herod the Great? Great. And in the introduction to today's TV program, I'm standing what's called the Herodian. Joel, did you ever go to the Herodian with us? I'm sure I've been to some of those rocky places. I've only, no, I don't think you've ever been to Herodian. Maxine, Herodian is an amazing place, isn't it? Shocking. It is the place that Herod built for his tomb. Now, it is quite a tomb because you can see it all the way from the city of Jerusalem. It looks like a mountain and it's not natural. He built it. There was nothing there. It was flat as could be. And he constructed an entire mountain. And then he built on the top this enormous colossal structure. Near there, there was a little village of everybody that was supposed to take care of the tomb. And that's where Herod was built. And Herod did everything colossal. Herodian. He did everything huge. He was Herod the Great. And today we're going to be looking at Herod. It's really going to be a lot of fun. There are some things I cannot tell you about Herod because some of it is simply disgusting. He was really great in many ways. He was great in terms of his building projects. He was great in terms of his temper. He was great in terms of his ego. He was great in terms of his wickedness. And some of it was really, really vile. But tonight we're going to be looking at Herod. And, of course, the name of our series that we're offering you right now is called Christmas, The Rest of the Story. And this is a sample of what you're not going to find in the Bible. It's based on the Bible, but the Bible doesn't give you all these details about Herod. But what we're going to give you tonight <coughs> will really help you understand the environment into which Jesus was born. You really need to understand this. And Herod had a bunch of boys. And his boys were just as crazy as he was. And one of them was Herod Antipas, who actually examined Jesus before Jesus' own crucifixion. So this Herod family had an impact for a long, long time. Even after Herod the Great was dead, the land was divided up between his sons. That is, his sons that he did not kill. And uh, it's quite a story. But anyway, you need to get the download, Christmas, the rest of the story, and it is free. 124 page study guide. I put so much into this. Please get it. Please just go to render.org right now, download it. And as we told you in our earlier home group this week, you need to sit around with your family and talk about the Christmas story this year. Don't just overeat and open presents and think about how much money you spent that you shouldn't put on your credit cards. Do something positive. Have fun with your family. Laugh a lot. Reach out to somebody that needs to be touched, that may be alone, and share the Bible study with your family. And the study guide will help you. Amen. 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 And there's a whole series that goes with it. And the first of every one of these 15 parts is in one of those locations, just like today. It's in the Herodian outside of Jerusalem. I'm telling you, the Herodian is an amazing place. Wow. But when you say Herod the Great, you don't mean he's a great guy. No, I don't mean he was a great guy. <laughs> you mean guy. he did exaggerated things. He, just huge, colossal, exaggerated kind of personality. You know, there's only been a few characters called great during their life. Most people are memorialized as being great after they're dead. But a few were called great in life. Herod was Herod the Great. Mm -hmm. Philip of Macedon, who was the father of Alexander the Great, he was the great. Alexander, Alexander was called Alexander the great. the great all during their lives. Catherine the Great in Russia was called Catherine, Veliki Catherine the Great during her life. Only a few people made it into that category. Herod was one of them, and he's the most notable of all. He was Herod the Great. But hey, welcome to Home Group, guys. Mm. Maxime, welcome. I'm so so happy to be here. If I may say that that about Russian culture, Joel, maybe you heard it. We Russians, we often use the word Herod to describe somebody 
wicked and bad. It's normal for a Russian person, like if there's someone bad, really bad guy, you can say, he's such a Herod. Russians do it all the time. You didn't know that? No. So we use this word to describe somebody horrible. The impact of Herod still with us. Denise? I wouldn't want my impact to be like that. No. That my name meant horrible. But Denise, welcome to Home Group. <laughs> Thank you. Home Group, welcome. Isn't this amazing what we are discovering and learning and sharing with one another this week? I just love it. Joel, we're so glad you're here. I'm glad to be with you all. And thank you for joining us. It's an honor to study the Bible together. And I was just thinking, you said there was Catherine the Great, Alexander the Great, Philip Macedonia the Great, and Herod the Great. It'd be great to put all those great people in one room and see who is the greatest. Oh my gosh. I think Herod the Great would just dominate everybody in the room. Well, I think we're going to hear why tonight. But anyway, also, if you're thinking about what to buy somebody for Christmas, it's not too late. It's going to be too late pretty quick because Christmas is almost here. If you act now, you have time to get this gift. But you need to order sparkling gems. And there's volume one and there's volume two. I'm really not trying to sell you these books because people buy these books nonstop. I just believe you need these. I really believe that. Or somebody that you know needs these. Everybody wants to start the new year with a new commitment. Last night, we talked about presenting our minds to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And one really good thing is for you to present your mind to the Lord that you're going to read your Bible every day during the next year, and you're going to do something to develop your spiritual life. Well, that's what these books do. And in each one of these, there's a thousand Greek word studies, but it's written in such a simple way anybody can understand it. And the intention is not to teach you Greek, it's to bring you gems from the Bible that will just make you want to say amen, just make you fall in love with the Bible. And if you know how to read the Bible and study the Bible, here's the way to get going. This will really help you. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, guys, we're going to have a good time tonight. Are you ready to talk about Herod? I'm ready. To ready. All right, let's go. Herod the Great. And so far, we have looked at the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2. But starting tonight, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 2. And when you come to Matthew chapter 2, we see events that are not recorded in Luke's gospel. And most of what we know about Herod, in fact, all of what we know from Herod from the Bible, is from Matthew chapter 2. Denise, I want you to read tonight mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. But wait, grab your Bible, because I want you to read this with us. Let's read together, beginning in Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. To which verse? 12. 12. Oh, my. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? I want to just stop and say tomorrow night we're going to talk about these wise men. Who are the wise men? Exactly who were they? Who were they? Okay. For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. What time the star appeared? That was a very important question. You're going to find out why. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. Okay, stop for a moment. It says he sent them to Bethlehem. That doesn't mean they obeyed him. They did not go to Bethlehem. They just kept going. They might have started in Bethlehem, but they kept going. 
They didn't stop until they got to Nazareth. I'm going to show you this in the next home groups. Okay. Okay. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And you're going to find out the young child was in Nazareth, not in Bethlehem. Okay, go ahead. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the... Wait, come into the what? House. House. When they were in Bethlehem, where were they? Cave. Cave. They were in a cave. They're already back home in Nazareth in their house. Okay. They saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream, they, that, that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. All of these events occurred after they left Bethlehem and went home to Nazareth. Jesus said Joseph and Mary. Yes, that's right. So all of these events occur after they've got back home to Nazareth, two years after the birth of Jesus. I'm going to prove this to you. But what do we know about King Herod? By the way, I know that some people are saying, what, 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 what? You mean... The wise men didn't show up when Jesus was born in Bethlehem? No, they showed up two years later. So this, this nativity scene. It's fake. It's wrong. No, here, here's the problem. Greeting card companies, they make these beautiful greeting cards that I love. I think they're beautiful. But they want to tell the whole story on the front of a greeting card. So on the front of the greeting card, they put the wise men, mm. the shepherds, the star, the angels, the animals, the holy family, all in one setting. Mm -hmm. There's two years between these events. Mm. Wise men showed up two years later. They were not there when Jesus was born. Mm. Now, people think they were because it says he sent them to Bethlehem. It never says they went to Bethlehem. That's where he sent them. That's not where they went. Now, Rick, in every spectacular you and I have been to. What is a spectacular, Denise? A, you know, big production. Okay, let me help you. Oh. Denise just did something very Russian. I did. A drama in Russian is called a spectacular. Oh. <laughs> so she means dramatic production. Okay. okay. They always have the wise men. They well, always have the wise men. Well, they just don't know how else to tell the story. And most people don't even know the story. They, you need to know the rest of the story. People get these events all confused. They jumble them all together. And uh, they were separate events. But what do we know about Herod the Great? Okay, here we go. You ready? Okay, mm -hmm. tell us. All right. Are you going to be my students tonight? Yes, oh, sir. yes. We're your students. Okay, I have to refer to my notes because I have a lot that are in the study guide. They're all, it's all in the study guide, which is free. Please go get the study guide. Renner.org, it's free. Herod was born in 72 B.C., mm -hmm. nearly seven decades before the birth of Jesus. He was known as Herod the Great. He lived to be quite an old man for people at that time. Mm -hmm. And through a series of events, he became the king of Judah. It was really a very long series of events. He was a manipulator from the very beginning. He manipulated his way into power. He found favor with Rome because he played tricks and was willing to curry favor with Rome to get his position. And he ruled the region for three decades. That already tells you something. Because to rule that region of the world for three decades, you had to be pretty fierce. Because kings and governors were regularly overthrown, but not Herod. Nobody could topple him. Three decades he ruled with an iron hand. Mm. And he knew how to play games with Rome. He knew how to appease Rome in order to keep them happy and so he could keep his position. But there are some fun things that we know about Herod. For example, Herod was a very dear friend of Cleopatra. Well, Cleopatra died just about 30 years before the birth of Jesus. Mm. People don't put Cleopatra in the same time frame with Jesus. So Herod was in his 40s when Cleopatra died. Yeah. But think about that. Jesus, 
Cleopatra, it's all the same time period. You know, most people think about Cleopatra and how she died at the bite of the snake, which we don't even know if that's the truth. But who would put Cleopatra in the same time frame with Jesus? But Herod and Cleopatra were very dear friends. In fact, some people allege that at some point he was romantically involved with Cleopatra. And you know what? It's very possible because Cleopatra, to maintain her power, she had sexual flings with people all over that were kings in order to curry favor with all of her neighbors. So she was quite a promiscuous individual. But she fell in love with Mark Antony. And Cleopatra and Mark Antony had quite a legendary romantic relationship. Mark Antony was such a dear friend of Herod that when Herod began to reconstruct the central part of Jerusalem and he rebuilt the temple, in the corner of the temple he built the Tower of Antonia, which is named after Mark Antony, who was the boyfriend of Cleopatra. Isn't that amazing? Mm. And so now we see that they were all living in the same time frame. Next, Herod was totally in control of Jewish leaders. He was afraid of them. So when Herod became the king, one of his very first acts, are you ready for this? Was to slaughter the entire Sanhedrin in the city of Jerusalem. He killed every one of them. You say, well, then how did they have a Sanhedrin if he killed them all? Because he handpicked every member of the new Sanhedrin. So it became like a rigged court. It was entirely in Herod's hands. Then he removed the high priest and he chose his own high priest. And from the time of Herod the Great through the time of Jesus, the Sanhedrin and the high priest were not legitimate leaders. They were puppets and pawns in Herod's hands. They were his religious mafia that carried out his commands and ruled in the religious affairs in the city of Jerusalem. So when you read about Caiaphas yeah. and Annas, they were not legitimate. These were people that had been installed by Herod. So they weren't religious people? Well, they were religious people, but they weren't the ones that were supposed to have those positions. Look like he removed the real ones. He killed the Sanhedrin. He appointed his own Sanhedrin. He had no right to do that. He removed the high priest, put in his own high priest, who was Annas, and then it was such a mafia operation, the high priest family. Annas gave his position to his son-in-law, Caiaphas. And when you come to the book of Acts, <clears throat> by the time you come to the book of Acts, Caiaphas is the high priest. But it talks about Annas and Caiaphas together. The two of them are in cahoots together. Even though Annas is supposed to be out of the picture, he really is the power behind Caiaphas I'm telling you, it's a mafia religious organization. But anyway, it was all set up by Herod the Great. He totally controlled the Sanhedrin and the religious going-ons in the city of Jerusalem. Next. Herod was extremely prosperous, extremely wealthy. He was known as a great builder, and everything he created was on a colossal scale. Anything you see that was built by Herod, just get ready. It's going to be big. <laughs> It's going to be big. His tomb was enormous. He built theaters. They were enormous. He built amphitheaters. They were enormous. He built Caesarea, the Hippodrome there. It is enormous. He built his legendary palace. He built the Herodian, which I talked to you about already. He erected the city of Masada. Masada on the top of that hill near the Dead Sea. It is amazing. He built what is known today as the second Jewish temple because Solomon built the first one. He established massive palaces, military fortresses. He constructed the Temple Mount walls as an expansion of the Temple Mount itself. In fact, today when you go to the temple, there's a big long tunnel that you can go in. It's called Hezekiah's Tunnel. And you see the stones in the wall. Mm -hmm. To this day, nobody knows how they moved those stones. First of all, they are perfectly cut, and you always know what is a Herodian stone because they're edged, they're bordered, they're very interesting. Some of those stones are over 100 tons. 
how did they even move those stones? But it was done at the command of Herod the Great. Everything he did was colossal. It was just colossal. He was noted for that. And today when people go to Israel and they want to go see all the sites, most of the sites that they, people want to go see are the sites that were constructed by Herod the Great. It's all still there. Isn't that amazing? Herod's rule was known as a time of great fear, suspicion, and slaughter. He killed a lot of people. He was perpetually paranoid that someone would take his throne, and he knew the Jews were waiting for a Messiah. He killed a lot of people who claimed to be a Messiah, and every time that he heard a new king or a new Messiah had been born, he went on a rampage. And he started killing people. And this erratic, violently behavior deeply upset the entire city of Jerusalem. So every time there was news of a new Messiah or a new king, it just deeply troubled the whole city of Jerusalem because they knew just get ready, bloodshed is about to take place. Herod's going to go on a rampage. He's going to start killing people. He was so stricken with fear about losing his throne that he even ordered his favorite wife, Maryam, to be executed. He loved her more than all of his wives. He, on, on another occasion, killed his brother-in-law for the same suspicion. He killed his elder sons because he heard rumors they were conspiring together to take his throne. He was a terrorizing individual. Everything about him was exaggerated. How did he die? Well, to the best that we can determine, historians believe that Herod died in the year 4 B.C. You say, well, why is that important to know? Because that lets us know when Jesus was born. He had to be alive when Jesus was born. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Most people, Jesus was born in year 1. No, he wasn't. He was born before Herod died. Well, if Herod died in 4, then when was Jesus born? We believe that Jesus was probably born in 6 or 7 B.C. There are many reasons we believe that. But he had to be born before Herod died, and Herod died in 4 B.C. So these dates, these kinds of questions really are very important to help us understand dates and times. But in regard to Herod's death, listen to what Josephus wrote. So I have a question. Yeah. So this Herod the Great is the Herod that we're reading about right now. Right. And he's the one who lied and said, I'm going to go worship the, this new king. And, right. Okay. All his boys lied, but he set the pattern. He was, he was the dad. He started the whole thing. All right, Josephus, who was the greatest jo uh, Jewish historian to ever live, so accurate in what he wrote that today in Israel, if they want to research something to see what is factual, they all go back to Josephus. No one questions Josephus. That is how accurate he is. Even scholars today, they all go back to Josephus. And Josephus wrote that Herod died as a result of sexual disease that he contracted from his multiple sexual affairs. He was extremely promiscuous, sleeping with an unimaginable number of people. And Josephus wrote, this is word for word, that he was a slave to his passions, a slave to it. And the death he died was absolutely miserable. He was consumed by worms as a result of this sexual sin. And what is amazing is this, and here I'm going to read you from my notes, this once exceedingly powerful, wise politician and manipulator, a man who knew how to control his people and the nations around him, could not control his own sexual instincts and appetite, and in the end it killed him. He could control everybody else, but he could not control himself. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. And an interesting fact regarding Herod's death is that he feared no one would cry or would be sorry when he died because he had been such a ruthless dictator. So what do you think he did to make sure people would die, would cry? the day that he died. He knew nobody would cry, but he wanted people to cry the day that he died. So what did he do? He said to his men, when you hear that I'm on my deathbed and I'm dying, 
gather all the Jewish princes of Israel, bring them into the Hippodrome, corral them by whatever means necessary, arrest them, drag them there against their will, and once it has been announced that I have died, kill all the Jewish princes in the Hippodrome. If you slaughter them, their families will cry, and all of Israel will cry too. That was the only way he thought anybody would cry the day that he died. Miserable. That's the kind of man that he was. But guess what happened when he died? They corralled all the Jewish princes into the Hippodrome. And Maxim, do you remember what happened? Well, right before they were supposed to kill them, if I remember correctly, uh, somebody saved them. His sister set them yes, free. Yes, somebody saved Herod's them. sister said, let those poor people go home. And instead of crying, there was laughter and rejoicing. <laughs> <laughs> <Herod died. laughs> That's horrible. Isn't that amazing? That's horrible. Praise God they were saved. Praise yeah. God. He was such a Herod. <laughs> but that's a little snapshot of Herod the Great. I mean, I could tell you one more detail, but yeah, I, save I, us. I, I just can't tell it. It's just so awful. Thank you. But that's Herod the Great that we read about when we come to Matthew chapter 2. And by the way, that's why I call this whole series Christmas the Rest of the Story. I mean, that's a, an amazing part of the story. Well, because... Now it makes sense that he's so evil that he could say, kill all the babe, kill all the children that are, are two years old or under. Kill them all. By the way, he didn't kill that many babies. People think that he killed like thousands of babies. Bethlehem was small. At a maximum, there could have been 20 babies. Some people say six. Well, the killing of a baby is terrible. But when Josephus wrote about all of his terrible acts, Josephus did not record the killing of those babies because the killing of six or 20 babies was almost not worth mentioning compared to all the horrible, horrible, massive things that he did. So the killing of those babies in Bethlehem never made it into the record, but he really did kill those babies. But we're out of time. Did you guys learn something new tonight? Yes, I thought that was very interesting, but I have a question about the dates if we have time for it. Sure. You said Herod died at 4 BC, mm -hmm. but Jesus was born after his death. No, Jesus was born before his death. You said Jesus was born at six. That's because you got to count backward. Ah, you got to count backward. It's minus four, minus. It's minus four. It, it counts backward. I see. Good question, Mr. Runner. Glad you asked that question. Mm -hmm. But when we come back tomorrow night in home group, we're going to see who are the Magi because the Magi came into town. The Bible says when Herod was king. There's a reason the Bible is telling us this was going to really upset Herod that these magi have come from the east saying, where is he born king of the Jews? And all Jerusalem was troubled about this because they knew Herod was about to go on a rampage. A lot of people were about to die. It upset the whole city. It's going to be awesome tomorrow night. See you. Sleep well. We're looking forward to tomorrow night. Bye-bye. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.